give me an O, give me an L. What does that spell? Clean power management. Wait, <laughs> I think I got off track there. That's definitely not enough letters. Okay, you guessed it. We're talking about point of load regulators today. Nothing gets past you guys. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. For today's networking, telecom, server, and enterprise storage applications, power efficiency and power density are crucial components to the success of their power management. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Dr. Davud Yazdani from Infineon joins me to discuss the details of Infineon's ultra-efficient integrated point of load voltage regulators. Davud and I take a closer look at the operation of these integrated point of load voltage regulators and why using the Infineon Optimos 5 FETs combined with the Infineon Fast Constant on time controller engine make them a great solution for your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. Hi, Davud. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so we're talking about powering servers and AI with ultra-efficient iPole voltage regulators today. But before we get started, Davud, what does an integrated pole really buy me as an engineer? The short answer to your question is high power density and ease of use. But let's step back for a second to see why high power density is important to start with. We hear a lot about the fact that we are living in the age of big data, or we hear about the explosion of big data. Big data means that we need more powerful servers and in general, more powerful CPUs to process such an increased amount of data. These processors are obviously power hungry. They need more power because they are powerful, which require a more capable voltage regulator solutions to support the increased power need while minimizing the motherboard space. Now you have more power in a smaller space, which practically means higher power density. That is why high power density is the key to enable the necessary performance need for both multi-phase voltage regulators, powering the main core rails in such processors, and point of loads for smaller rails, mainly less than 40 amps of continuous current. Now with that in mind, here is how we achieve the high power density in our point of loads. We are using the best-in-class Optimus FET technology, which provides the benchmark efficiency. We are using a simple-to-use, fast, constant on-time controller engine, which gives us the industry-best transient performance. And compared to the traditional constant on-time engines, requires less output capacitors. There is no need for compensation circuit. It has minimum external components which all these translates to low bill of materials, which means you have a compact solution. So you have a compact solution, you have very high efficiency because of the Optimus 5 technology that you are using. That means we are offering you, as an engineer, a very high power density solution that you can use in your application. So Davud, what does Infineon offer in terms of poles? So we offer both analog point of loads and smart point of loads that have digital telemetry features. Our existing digital interface products or a smart point of loads are using voltage mode controller engine. And if you look at the solutions that we are offering from VR 12.5, VR 13, VR 13 HC, all those applications they are using the existing generation of digital products that we have, that they are all voltage mode controller based. For VR14, we are using Infineon Fast Constant on Time Controller Engine. This is the first point of load family in industry that is supporting VR14 Intel server platforms. This family also supports the PM bus 1.3 which you can power the latest GPUs or FPGAs or the CPUs that 
they require I score C or PM bus in their applications. Definitely hear more about this product family in a different session that we are going to have together. But from the analog point of load side, we recently released a new family of products that they are highly efficient and very simple to use, supporting from three amps all the way to 40 amps in a different package sizes that we are offering. For instance, the 30 amp, which is in a four by five package, and 40 amp version, which is in a five by six PQFN package, are the smallest and the most efficient point of loads that you can find in the marketplace today. Some of these point of loads that we are offering that you see here in this table are common footprints, which means there is an alternative pin compatible solution available in the market, which gives a peace of mind to customers or engineers in times of chip shortages, something that we are facing now. Okay, so Davood, what if I'm looking for a high current pole? What does Infineon have to offer me in this case? For high power point of loads, we believe that the MCM or multi-chip modules are the most reliable and efficient technology that is available now in the market, which normally there is a controller and two FETs integrated inside one package. If you go below 20 amps, the offering is normally the monolithic base. The FET technology that we use in our high current point of loads is Optimus 5, which is the best in class FET technology that has been used in all our power stages that we are offering to the market. And it's been used widely in majority of the servers out there in key OEM and ODM accounts that we are dealing with. This is, uh, in fact, the core competency of Infineon when it comes to the Optimus FET technology and how to deal with the challenges that we will face using this very thin FET technology when we go to assembly or packaging this uh, type of products. So, Davood, efficiency is also really important here as well, right? What are we talking about in terms of efficiency? The efficiency data we captured here on one of the products that we are offering now, the IR3887, which is a 30 amp in a 4x5 package. If you look at 12 volt V in and 5 volts V out, uh, you can see that we achieved the peak efficiency of around 98% and the full load efficiency of 97. For 1.2 volt output, we are looking at 93% peak efficiency and 92% full load. As you can see, there is a pattern here. In both cases, the efficiency stays mainly flat from low load to full load. This is because of the excellent figure of merit of the Optimus 5 technology that we are using in these products, which provides a very high peak efficiency without sacrificing the full load efficiency that we are offering. Okay, so Davood, keeping our thermal concerns in mind is also crucial here as well, right? Yes, indeed. But let's look at the thermal performance of IR3889 as an example here. At 3.3 volt output, as you see here, and 30 amp continuous load current, that's almost 100 watts of power. As expected, thanks to Optimus 5 technology that we are using, the hottest temperature measured on the board is at 72 degrees Celsius, when there is no airflow. If we have airflow, 180 LFM, for instance, here, the temperature can drop to 57 degrees. This shows how cool the point of load stays for such load conditions, allowing the part to operate at a higher ambient temperature let's say in servers or telecom applications, while reliably support the full load here. Okay, so Davood, earlier you mentioned a fast, constant, on-time engine. So can we dig into the details of that as well? Uh, absolutely. Let's go through a typical application diagram here, using a device uh, featuring fast, constant, on-time that we are offering. As you see here, the fast cut device has a very simple output voltage feedback network, which translates to less external components. 
This means that no complex type two or type three compensation circuit designs are needed, something that you see in current mode or voltage mode controllers. This is basically a compensation free circuit that we are offering. In addition to this, for this family of products, we are offering selectable soft start time, latch off or non latch off over voltage protection, different switching frequencies. You can select between FCCM mode or diode emulation mode, or you can uh, also select the overcurrent protection limits. All these functionality that I just mentioned can be set using a pin strap resistor, which enables design flexibility and simplifies basically the design effort that you need to do on these products. Look at the fast code control engine itself. It has three major blocks the floor generator, the ramp generator, and the adaptive on-time generator. The floor generator helps improve the V-out accuracy and also aids the transient load response. The internal ramp generator provides an internal ramp compensation, which enhances the loop stability of the control loop. And the adaptive on-time generator provides a pseudo-constant switching frequency for us Okay, so Davood, can we take a closer look at that adaptive on-time generator? The on-time of the fast cut that we are offering here is determined by the output voltage, input voltage, and preset switching frequency. So in this case, uh, we are offering eight different switching frequency from 600 kilohertz to 2 megahertz with 200 kilohertz per step. The preset switching frequency is selected by simply connecting a resistor from T on mode pin shown here to ground. The adaptive on-time generator block adjusts the on-time automatically to different input and output voltages to maintain a pseudo-constant switching frequency for us. Based on this, you only need one resistor value for each switching frequency, regardless of what your output voltage is. If you look at the table here with 1.5 kilo ohm resistor connecting to pin T on mode pin to ground, you can select the switching frequency of 800 kilohertz, regardless if the output voltage is one volt or five volts. On the other hand, if you don't have this adaptive on-time generator, you have to use different resistor values, depends on the output voltage, which makes the bill of material for each design complicated because for each output voltage, you have to select different resistor value. And that's the benefit of the adaptive on-time generator that we are using in our fast constant on time here. Okay, so we, can we also look at that floor generator a bit more? Yes, we can. So... The floor generator is an internally compensated error amplifier that compares the feedback signal with an internal reference voltage. It has a very high DC gain, providing a very good regulation on the average value of the feedback signal. This makes the output voltage accuracy insensitive to the internal ramp tolerance or to the output voltage ripple. Here, uh, I just want to show the functionality of the floor generator in two different scenarios in a steady state. One with small output voltage ripple, and the other one with a high output voltage ripple. As you see here, the floor voltage is lower when the output voltage ripple is higher, which makes the average value of the feedback signal stay the same in both cases. That is why floor generator ensures a very good DC regulation for us. In addition to the improvement of voltage accuracy in the steady state, the floor generator can also help to improve transient response. If you look at the picture here, you will see that the floor generator in transient reversely react to the feedback voltage, forming an envelope to the PWM ramp. During the load step transients, the envelope window gets narrow, resulting in maximum switching frequency, 
because you want to switch faster in order to send more energy to the load. During the load release, the envelope window gets bigger, resulting in minimum switching frequency, or effectively you go to pulse skipping mode because you want to make sure you don't send more energy to the output capacitors. Okay, so Davood, what does the output voltage regulation look like here? One of the main advantages of our fast cut is we are providing an excellent transient performance without sacrificing the output voltage regulations. This is the advantage that our fast cut has over the traditional cut engines that are available in the market. Regarding the output voltage regulations, as you see here, both fast constant on time and voltage mode control engine, they have very good load regulation with an output voltage, let's say, of 1.2 volts here. The accuracy is uh, plus minus 1%, similar to current mode control or voltage mode controls out there. So, Davud, we talked about transient performance, right? What does that look like here? During the transient, the envelope gets either narrow or it gets bigger. Depends if you are in load release or you have like a step change in the load. If you look at the simulation results that we put here, during the load step, you will see that the output voltage drops. That's something that we expect. That means the feedback voltage gets dropped. And the floor voltage, we said that would be the reverse of the feedback voltage, which narrows the band here. When the band gets narrowed, that means the part will switch faster in order to put the output voltage back in regulation. If you look at during the load release, you will have overshoot in the output voltage. That means the feedback voltage goes higher. The floor would be the reverse of the feedback voltage. Therefore, the envelope gets bigger, and then you will switch less. And when you switch less, the output voltage starts to go down. Now let's look at some bench measurements that we've done on IR3889, which is a 30 amp part in a 5x6 package, which uses the same fast constant on time engine. The regulator is set at a switching frequency of 800 kilohertz, and the output voltage is one volt here. When the load current decreases from 25 amps to 16 amps, let's say at 30 amp per microsecond slew rate, the IR3889 skips the PWM pulses, as I mentioned in simulation results earlier, which limits the power transfer to the output. Of course, there is overshoot on the output voltage, which is mainly caused by the energy stored in the inductor. When the load current increases from 16 to 25 amps, let's assume the same slew rate of 30 amp per microsecond, the IR3889 increases the PWM frequency from 800 kilohertz to 1.5 megahertz. In this case, it tries to transfer the energy to the output more frequently. So that shows the transient performance during the load release or when you have a step change in the load. Fantastic. Now, Davood, what kind of options do I have in terms of load and package size? This new family of products that we recently released supports from 3 amps all the way to 40 amps. We have different packages for it, uh, from 3x3 three three package, definitely for low current ones, and 5x7 would be for 40 amp. We do have 30 amp version of these products in a 4x5 package, which is the smallest part that is available in the market right now. Some of the products that we have, they are running at fixed switching frequency. Some of them, you have more flexibility in order to adjust the switching frequency, soft start time, or OCP limit. There is a wide range of products that we are offering that well suited for server, telecom, networking applications, which can power any of those low current to high current rails. Excellent. So, Davood, I think that's almost all the time I have for today, but can you recap your main points for me? The key takeaway from this product family that we are offering here is high power density and ease of use. 
We are using the Optimus 5 MOSFET technology that provides the benchmark efficiency. We are using a simple to use fast constant on time controller engine that uh, requires minimum external components, which again, that translates to ease of use as well as high power density. The fast constant on time because of the floor generator that we have provide excellent V out regulation as well as very good transient performance. And all of this is happening without the need for any external compensation. Excellent. Well, Davood, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Pleasure talking to you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or check out YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal. 